Wow. This is Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings. Uh, so Pumpkinhead 2, a 1994 direct-to-video sequel, somehow, to the 1988 classic Pumpkinhead. How this is a sequel, Pumpkinhead 2, makes no sense at all. Why? Well, you remember the whole story of the first movie, giving us all the lore of Pumpkinhead and, and Ed Holly and him becoming Pumpkinhead at the end after finding out that destroying true evil means destroying yourself. Well, take that whole premise and flush it down the toilet because <laughs> nothing in Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings literally has anything to do with the first movie. So why is it called Pumpkinhead 2? I have no fucking idea. Tragedy, ain't it? Normally this doesn't happen in horror movies until about the 7th or 8th sequel. But in Pumpkinhead 2, it falls into the trap of where it completely retcons everything from the first film to start its own brand new lore. So apparently in the 1950s, this high school group of kids decide, um, let's go murder uh, a deformed kid. <laughs> Why? I guess because he's deformed. Hey, there he is. Turn it down, fuck. Let's finish this thing once and for all. <laughs> Dirty job. But someone had to do it. <laughs> Fast forward to 1994 present day, and Pumpkinhead is resurrected by some teenagers. All the story of the teenagers really has nothing to do with the film whatsoever besides from them resurrecting Pumpkinhead. The witch that we discussed in the first film does not exist in this universe. It's just some old lady who, I guess, is considered a witch by the town. The witch of this town took care of the dead, deformed boy's body after it was released by the police and has been guarding it for years and years until teenagers come along and steal some of her potions. So these kids resurrect Pumpkinhead. He's out to kill the kids who murdered him back in the 1950s, while also kill the kids that were there when the old lady who was taking care of him died. And then you have the town mayor, who wants to capture Pumpkinhead and use him as an attraction piece, or not warn people that he's killing people, just like the mayor in Jaws. Look, we depend on the summer people here for our very lives. You are not going and to have a summer, unless you leave this finished. We're not only going to have to close the beach, we're going to have to hire somebody to kill the shark. Now, I got a couple of guys from the National Enquirer all set mm, to come down people here. People have died here, you know, and you do know that, don't you? Tragedy, ain't it? So is the budget of this here town. I want that creature, Braddock! Dead or alive, I want it! Now, let's talk about the biggest sin of the movie. Pumpkinhead's prosthetics. Oh, Lord God. Give me strength. Yeah, that pretty much sums it all up. How we went from Stan Winston Studios making Pumpkinhead look so real and so good. <laughs> to looking like a cheap knockoff from the flea market. There are, there are parts in here where I'm laughing, but I'm laughing for the wrong reasons. I'm laughing because how bad Pumpkinhead looks, how stupid Pumpkinhead acts. He has one move, one attack move basically throughout the whole movie, and that's bitch slap anyone that gets in his way. <laughs> And that's another thing, let's talk about the kills for a second. When Pumpkinhead kills people in this movie, most of the time it's off screen. You see nothing. So why the fuck was this movie rated R? I'll tell you why. Because they wanted to have one gratuitous scene with the chick's tits in it. That's it. Most of the time you're not seeing anyone get killed on screen. There is one, one cool kill scene in the entire movie and it's over within 10 seconds. What I don't understand is if how this is a sequel, how they completely just erased everything from the first movie. Um, the whole fact that it's called Blood Wings 
It's not because Pumpkinhead grows wings. It's because the people that killed the deformed kid at the beginning of the movie were in a club called the Red Wings. Ah, uh, here we are. Look at this. The Red Wings. So throughout the film, not only is Pumpkinhead killing people, but he's finger painting fucking red wings all over people's houses. Blood wings. I don't know what it all means. The sheriff also, I'd like to add, acts completely oblivious to what he knows about Pumpkinhead in the movie, but then later on throughout the movie he's like, oh yeah, you know, you know, you know when I was a boy, you know, I kind of remember that legend. Oh, wait a minute, I know the whole fucking rhyme. Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead? What is that, some kind of a fairy tale? It's a kind of a demon the hill people believe in. I remember hearing about it when I was a kid. It's just so all over the place that it, none of it makes sense. Tragedy, ain't it? I'm laughing because Pumpkinhead looks so freaking awful. His, his fighting moves are just like, like I said, slapping people around until they die. Him finger painting stuff on the walls. It just, can you get that picture in your mind? You just see Pumpkinhead taking his time. Just, just finger painting. Hello, Judge. Jesus. So, the end of the movie. It's revealed that the sheriff, at one point when he was a child, <laughs> saved the deformed boy from falling down a mine shaft. So, what does he do? He's just like, no, pumpkin head, don't kill my daughter. It's me. And Pumpkinhead's just like, oh, okay. Saved your life once right here, don't you remember? Please, she's my daughter. It's all right, honey. You're safe now. And that's when the whole town folk find Pumpkinhead and treat him like a birthday pinata. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings, a 3. Tragedy, ain't it? There are a ton of Easter eggs in this movie about other horror movies that are way better than this one. I saw the Necronomicon in there from Evil Dead. They reference Pet Cemetery. What the fuck is this, Pet Cemetery? Well, be careful. This looks like a page from a book of shadows. What? Oh no. Kane Hodder's in this, who played Jason. In a way, is that to treat our baby sister? You got a lot of room to talk. What the hell is that supposed to be? I ain't the one sleeping with her. So there we go. We get our unofficial Jason versus Pumpkinhead movie. So unlike the first movie, where it had a very kind of cliffhangerish ending, there's nothing in this one. Nothing. And the fact that they made Pumpkinhead a pinata at the very end at a kid's birthday party, basically, and he folds like a fucking lawn chair when he falls. What the fuck? that they reused Pumpkinhead, erased everything from the first movie, and, and made some TV soap opera shit show. What the fuck happened? Let me guess, uh, you guys are the local badasses, right? That's right. Well, no offense, but I've seen a lot better. I'll get you that the book is real. <laughs> Dead meat slime bag. And not to mention, this movie spawned a video game, Pumpkinhead Blood Wings on PC. Beware. You are entering the world of Pumpkinhead. I've looked up video footage of this. You do not want this game. It has literally almost nothing to do with Pumpkinhead except for finding stills of the movie to rewatch shitty clips 
of the shitty parts of the movie. I liked it better before. Don't call me slick. I didn't like it in high school and I still don't like it. Don't do it to yourself. I'm really, really not looking forward to the next two movies, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for you guys, and I'm going to do it for the sake of saying that I saw all the Pumpkinhead movies, even if I really don't want to. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, don't go out and rent this. I mean, if you find it for less than a dollar, sure, whatever, watch it. I, I'm going to say, you're not going to probably have a good time, but whatever. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you on the next movie review. Pumpkinhead, ashes to ashes. <laughs> I love Pumpkinhead, but I cannot stand behind this movie. Tragedy, ain't it?